in, in 1968, one of the most powerful experiences I had in my life, one of the most powerful experiences I had in my life was a candlelight march from Baskin Hill to the Capitol and looking down State Street and seeing candles, thousands and thousands of candles. Who would have thought that 40 years later we would be here today? My work was, the reason I wanted to do this work was because I believed Madison was a place that that felt for all citizens, that all citizens had a voice. I created a gathering place to debate ideas, whether they're political ideas, personal ideas, and the very disappointing thing is uh, this decision has been made not talking about the quality of the art. That by and large I'm gratified that most people have said it's beautiful and that they love it and that they're very sad that it's, it's going. I'm sad. I'm sad because it's true. Urban spaces change. Times change. But the answer to these problems are answers that people need to come together for. And I had always believed that the philosopher's stones were that kind of place. The level of disillusionment is such that some of my closest friends are saying, Jill, you shouldn't work in the public sphere any longer because it's not supported. I made a statement earlier to this group behind me, which was, don't apologize to me. Turn to your neighbor. Turn to the other citizens. Apologize to them. This piece belonged to you, the city of Madison, to every one of you. I don't need an apology. And so then that's my second question. How does it feel to have such a show of support from the community? <laughs> it's yeah. It's a small gathering, but yeah. it's during the work day, yeah. and it was called with like 24 hours notice. How does that make you feel to have your artwork yeah. recognized, valued? Well, the first thing is that it's valued by people that don't have the money to go into an art museum. I created public work because I believe art should touch everyone's life and that art can make everyone's life better. And so I feel very gratified. I, I am very, very touched at the conversations that I've had while I've been uh, writing, the writings on the chalk outlines of the stones. There have been many people that have talked to me. The level of kindness that the folks show towards one another as they have been in, around me these last two days. It's very hard. I, I wish I could capture some of that kindness. Maybe that would make me want to make more public art. Oh, <laughs> well, I certainly hope you do because it's just people are floored by this. People. All sorts of people that I normally wouldn't even be interacting with on social media are like, seriously? Because, like, you know, it's been in the paper, and I know a couple of reporters have covered this sort of briefly, but it's when you get on social media and people see that you're chalking the writings that were originally designed to go on each form and, yeah. and that you're standing in the middle of an open space yeah. where you created life. You know, art is life. I think the thing to remember, for me as a public artist, I don't make the art just from my own perspective. I, I think as artists we learn to spelunk our own souls, that's true. And that to create public art means to kind of cave dive the soul of a community. The community informed the design of this art. And that's what I heard, and that's what I reflected back. I am very saddened that more people didn't come forward to speak up for it. Many did, but I think many, as you say, 
were seen on public media. Just, they didn't believe it would happen. This isn't the same thing as a Richard Serra tilted arc being taken out. This piece was designed for people to use and people use it. In this space? In this space. It's site specific. <laughs> And thank you very, very, very much. Well, thank you for your support.